Good morning. Welcome to our broadcast today. We're in the midst of our worship service, but we'll begin with the teaching in just a moment. Thank you for your patience. Praise God. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. About there's something about that name. Praise God. Glory, glory, glory. Father, we just worship you today. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the unspeakable gift that you made of your Son to us, Father. We receive him today as our Lord, as our Savior, as our elder brother, the firstborn among many brethren. Thank you for this opportunity to fellowship with you today. Father, to feast upon your word, glory to God. And we just thank you that today as we feed upon your word, faith is coming to us. We're being strengthened with all might in the inner man by your Holy Spirit, Father. Because you've called us for such a time as this to represent you before this world we live in. And we want to do it well. We know, Father, that we'll only do so as we depend upon you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, welcome to the service today. We're so glad that you could join with us, whether you're here live with us right this moment or at some future point. Don't let my voice scare you. I've actually had my voice back for a couple of days, but go figure. It's time to minister the Word of God, so the devil wants to play games, but he's a defeated liar. Amen. You know, Jonah made a startling statement. Here he was in the belly of a a fish. Uh, He had actually died, most scholars agree. And he said, I'll not regard lying vanities. He said anything contrary to the provision or the promise of God to him was just a lie and not to be tolerated or or to be uh, honored. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Well, it's the Christmas season. And. You know, I had my plans, but I believe the Lord's got His plans, and I'm going to go with His. We want to share with you today, I'm going to talk a little bit about God's gift for humanity. You know, uh, really, every time I teach on Christmas, I just want to teach about the greatest gift that's ever been given. Yeah. And uh, those words barely describe the preciousness of the gift the Father made of His Son to us. But I'm I'm going to give it a different title, so, you know, just just to give it a different title i guess and i think it's real good for us to remember that jesus is exactly that he's god's gift to humanity he's not just god's gift to the church or to believers but for every man woman or child that's ever drawn a breath and needed redemption yeah i um i heard something earlier and i'm not going to call names because i understand the sentiment you know, I'm, I'm such a softy. I, I remember back when I finally surrendered to the Lord and began to recognize uh, the repercussions of my decisions prior to Jesus. Yeah. You know, there's some of you watching in Bradenton, and you don't have any idea. It just wants to make me cry right now. But you have no idea how precious you are to me, and I always have been, mm-hmm. though I've not always shown it. I can remember uh, one of the most difficult challenges I faced when I came back to the mm-hmm. Lord was the realization that his call had been upon my life to preach the gospel. And rather than preaching the gospel, I'd spent much of my life as a young man and even as a child doing anything but representing God in my life. And I felt so bad. You know, I believe this, and this isn't to put anybody else under any kind of weight, shame, or guilt. There is therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But it dawned on me, the whole time I was out there playing games with this world, I was letting people that were near and dear to me perish as far as I was concerned. Mm. Mm. If if we're not reaping the harvest for God, then by default we're in our negligence surrendering folks to a potential and eternal hell. Mm. And it grieved me to think of people I knew that had passed up to that point in my life that maybe I could have had an influence in their lives. And I don't know if they're in heaven or hell. I pray that somebody 
uh, help them see Jesus before they departed. Yeah, uh, I really do. But I tell you that there was nothing more grievous because y'all are that precious to me, as are those that the Lord's called me to reach to today and to minister to today. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I tell you, I just um, God bless you. Thank you for being a part of my life all these years. And and uh, you know, thank God that. You're going to one day be with us in heaven. Amen. Amen. We're, not, we're not in a rush to get there. I've had a couple of opportunities already, but there's a work to be done here. Yeah. And that's that's what kind of, uh, you know, I'm just so blessed. I got opportunities and chances that not everybody has had. And I don't, I don't know why altogether <clears throat> other than I think the Lord took me at my word when I was in heaven back when I was 20 years old and died by overdose at my own hand went to heaven and got there and discovered I was in heaven rather than hell. I was fascinated with death because I was so depressed at that time. I read a lot of booklets about death, a lot of books about death, and it spoke of those that, that had death experiences without Jesus and how tormented they were. And uh, it spoke also of those that had gone to heaven and, and come back, talked about going to a, a place that could only be described as heaven. And returning, and there was no comparison between the two. Some would come back in a state of heavenly bliss. Others that didn't know Jesus would come back screaming in torment, "Don't let me die! Don't let me die!" Mm -hmm. And I remember Dr. Rollins uh, was talking about that one time and yeah. about how a fella. He said I was a nominal Christian at best, and and I was the attending physician in the emergency room when this individual uh, began to die. Mm -hmm. And as he died, he started screaming, and his face was sheer, unbridled torment. Mm -hmm. And and he said, as as I looked at him, and he, he every now and then he'd gasp, and he'd come back and say, pray with me, doctor, pray with me, doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor didn't know anything to pray, really. He just, because he, you know, he just kind of went to church because that's just what you did in his generation. Yeah. But he wasn't really walking in it all that much. But he remembered some prayer he'd heard prayed somewhere, and and in some remote way, it ultimately led this man to salvation. And he said everything changed. Yes. He said the very atmosphere of the room they were in changed yes. when that man got saved. Yes. And, and uh, so you know sweet. that's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ yes. and the mercy of God. Yes. So here I am in heaven, and I asked, how did I get here? Because I thought I'd be splitting hell wide open. And, and most of you that knew me probably figured the same. And, and that's not an indictment again. It's just, just where we were all living at. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, they used to have some stupid shirt about, heaven wouldn't have me and well I won't even try to remember it never mind uh, to basically claiming to be too bad for hell well anyway you know I said how, how did I get here and I was reminded of receiving Jesus when I was a little kid in Sunday school a Sunday school class I hated to attend by the way mm -hmm. But never I'm so have glad I, you were there. I am too. I am too because see, made I a would, difference. <laughs> devil doesn't give no second chances. Mm -mm. And so here I was, and and the next thing I said when I heard that was, if I'd have known it was so easy to get to heaven, I'd have told everybody. Yeah. You know, and, and I didn't know I was coming back. There was no idea, no, you know, not even a glimmer of hope that I was coming back to earth. But then the next thing I know, I'm back in my body in the hospital. Three days later, I thought it was the next morning. <laughs> I was telling Robin about my experience one day, and my mom was there, and she said, "Son, it wasn't the next morning. Mm -mm. It was three days it was later. Three days. Three days later. But it was. People ask, what are we going to do in heaven for eternity? Well, it just seemed like a few moments. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. Time is irrelevant. Praise God. What you're aware of in heaven is the people you love and the people that love you yeah. and the fact that God loves us all. Mm. Well, anyway, having said all that, I want to talk about the greatest gift that's ever been given, God's gift to humanity. Amen. And, and uh, as I'm starting out, I just I read something this morning, and there's a, a well-known entertainer that has come upon some mm -hmm. physical infirmity. I'm not even going to say who it is, but it's somebody that I not long ago saw in a video uh uh, and and it seemed to be truthful, but it showed this individual is is part of a company that is creating this demonic, by intent, satanic line of clothing yeah. for children. Mm -hmm. oh. And now they're afflicted physically, and and of course it's, it amazes me people that worship the devil, people that worship the devil, but ask others to pray for them. Yeah. 
Well, my prayer is that they'd come to Jesus because yes. that's the biggest need yes. in their life. Yes. They got a bigger problem than the physical infirmity that has beset them. Yeah. And uh, but somebody else made the comment about let them suffer in their basically sin stained. Mm. Death ruled body and mm -hmm. and it breaks my heart. I yes. I used to be such a softy. You know, God God at one time loved Satan, mm -hmm. but not as Satan. No, he was Lucifer. Not, he was one of his. Rebellious. He was one of his head people. <laughs> back yeah. then. Well, head, head angels. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've been taught, and, and I have no reason to dispute it, that he was <laughs> overall worship, and and he was to basically <laughs> receive and then translate to God all the worship offered unto the Lord and, and uh, be part of that process, but he got greedy and wanted it all got to himself. Up. Got yeah, up. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, mm, isn't that something? You think about that. You know, we, we, we think worship is just something we got to do before we can have a teaching. Well, we don't, but I know there's a lot of people that do. And uh, yet to the devil, that was so precious. He was willing to risk it all mm -hmm. to have it to himself. Mm -hmm. If you only knew how precious worship was to God, you'd get to church early instead of late, <laughs> right? Yes. Well, anyway, turn with me if you would. I'm just going to give you these verses, and then we're going to talk about this a little bit. John 3.16 says in verse 16, For God so loved the world. What's, what's the world being talked about here? It's talking about sin ruled humanity. Dead, desolate, spiritually dead humanity. Yeah. But he loved it. You you heard the term a face only a mother could love. <laughs> yes. Well, it was a world only God could love. Yes. There's yes. nothing about it, and see, I understand that person's sentiment, but I don't agree with it. Right. There's something that breaks my heart at the thought of people that deserve hell going to hell. Yes. Well, and, we and, deserved hell. Yeah, we I'm did. So we sure we did. It ain't none of us <laughs> sinned any less than anybody else or no. any more. No. And uh, I'm, I'm so reminded of Br Brother Lester Sumrall. I just keep thinking about his testimony. And I think I shared it recently, but I'll just share very quickly here. He was in a situation where he was in a little country church, and he was preaching the gospel there, but he was sharing his testimony. And part of his testimony, for those of you, you, uh, you that may not be aware, was that he was on a deathbed. He was dying, and, and the Lord spoke to him and presented before him on one side a, 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 a coffin, and on the other side... A huge Bible, yeah. the biggest Bible he said he'd ever, ever seen. seen. And he told him, he said, essentially, you choose. You're going to serve one or the other. You choose which one. Well, he chose to serve God and serve the Bible. Yeah. And here he is in this little country church, and he's sharing this testimony. Well, after after his first service or so, he'd gone into a little community store there. It sounded like kind of a general store. Mm -hmm. sounded like Sam Drucker's. Yes, <laughs> it did. It did. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know who Sam Drucker is, Petticoat Dry Junction, goods. right? Dry goods. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> went into uh, this little store, and he ever heard these people talking and laughing, and he wanted to see what was so entertaining. So he got close enough that he could hear them, and they were talking about, if you want to hear some some whoppers, if you want to hear some stories, you got to come to these meetings and hear this preacher. You wouldn't believe the lies he's telling. You're the biggest liar. Yeah, yeah. Come hear the biggest liar. He said he talks about the biggest Bible. Well, he must be the biggest liar. Well, Lester Summerall went over and cussed him and walked out the door. He wasn't very far along in his spiritual development, I don't guess, at that point. Guess not. He said he walked out of there, and he started walking down the road, and he said, suddenly as he's walking down the road, his, his attention is drawn to the left, and there's a column of people. It seemed like he said it was about four foot wide, and, and just people crushing up against each other, and they're all moving forward, mm -hmm. moving forward. And he said, and, and I could hear something up in the distance, and it was screaming, and, and just the most horrific sounds of torment and agony. And he said, as I got up to this clo the, up close to the end of this this column of people, they were falling off into the abyss, into hell and its flames and mm -hmm. torment. Yeah. And, and he said, the Lord told me, he said, mm -hmm. those are the ones you're responsible for. Those are the ones that are going to go to hell if you quit. Because mm -hmm. he was done with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he was leaving ministry. He was leaving everything. And, and the Lord showed him that. Thank God. Thank God that he had a heart for God yeah. and, and repented and, yeah. and turned back to the Lord mm -hmm. and, and 
oh, the things that the Lord used Dr. Summerall to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend quite a while in heaven probably going over some film. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you suppose God's got some Super 8s, maybe VHS even, I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, God so loved the world. Amen. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. I mean, he opened the door wide, folks. He said, it doesn't matter how evil you are, how evil you've been, uh, if you'll just believe. Yeah. If you'll believe what? If you'll believe that Jesus is who the Father says he is, and that you're precious enough to God that he would send someone so incredible to redeem you. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. That's all that's required for salvation <laughs> is to confess with your mouth. That simply means to say with your mouth what God says. God says he raised up his son, so I say he raised up Jesus, and he did it for me, and I confess Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Yeah. That makes the difference. That's all I did as a child mm -hmm. was I said, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Come into my heart. And that's what made the difference between me going to heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here today. Isn't that funny? Think about this. Those of you in Bradenton and, and the people that are with us today, <laughs> uh, the only reason I'm here today is you. Yeah. Now, that shouldn't surprise you. No. It shouldn't because he, he, he gave his son Jesus for you, and Jesus was far more precious of a gift than mm. I am. Mm. Amen. All he gave me for was to tell you about Jesus. Glory to God. So he loved the world that much. There's never been a more precious, a more valuable, a more necessary, a more relevant gift mm -hmm. that's been given to anyone than the gift the Father made of His Son to us. Yeah. Now turn over, if you would, very quickly to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. What was the problem? We know that Jesus came unto His own and His own received Him. Not in fact, right. we're going to read that in a little bit here. It's found over in John's Gospel chapter 1. But what was the problem? Why were they not receptive <laughs> to Jesus? Well, Part of the problem was they were no smarter than the devil. <laughs> Amen. They, they, humanity back then, like humanity today, thought they had it all figured out, and they knew exactly what God needed to do to serve them. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't a clue. Right. They really hadn't a clue. I think one of the first things every believer needs to do is to be taught to let God be God. Yes. Let him dictate yes. the terms of salvation of life and of eternity because he is when all is said and done yeah. but in Isaiah 9 and verse 1 it says nevertheless the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations you know, really, when you come right down to it, it's talking about the misery in which this world had lain and, mm -hmm. and, and was residing in. Yeah. And, and you know what? When you read these verses, it kind of sounds like current events to me. Yes. I mean, how many of us are sitting back wondering, when is God going to do something about this world we live in? He is doing something, but it's dependent upon us as believers being willing to get on board and believe that He yeah. still is the all-conquering redeemer of yeah. humanity amen yeah. yes glory to god uh, it, it, mm, mm. well let me finish this I, i'm taking up my time here nevertheless the dimness shall not be as such okay look on down if you would in verse two the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light <coughs> they that dwell upon the uh, dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shined and what does that mean the land the shadow of death it's talking about this world, this sin-ruled, death-stained world that yeah. we live in. Do you realize, had Adam not sinned, we'd never needed St. Jude's. Thank God right. for St. Jude's. Right. We'd never needed the first hospital. Right. We'd have never needed the first doctor. Nothing personal against doctors. No. I just hate that people hurt, and there are some they people, even doctors they can't them. help, right? Yeah. Uh, there'd have never been the first graveyard. How much more real estate would be available to people mm -hmm. just in the absence of graveyards? Wow. You know, the, 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 the first rose would never have faded. Yeah. The first blade of grass would never, would never have withered away had it not been for sin. Yeah. And, and so it's talking about everywhere you look, you can see 
the shadow of death. When you see a piece of rotten wood, you're seeing the shadow of death. Yeah. When you see a, 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 a drug rolled, sin-stained life of someone broken and hopeless, mm -hmm. you're seeing the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Every time you drive to Walmart, you see people out begging for money, begging for food. Yeah. And I know some are, are illegitimate. Some are just, it's a game to them. It's a scam. I know that, but then again, there are some, some that it's all too real. They're yes. hurting, they're broken, yes. and they're hopeless. Yeah. And that's the best they can hope for in life, yeah. as far as what they know. Maybe somebody needs to tell them about Jesus. I don't know. Maybe they've heard. But anyway, it, it tells us that the people that have walked in darkness, verse 2, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according. I really believe what this is describing is for all the secular and social advances that are made, there's no corresponding reward. Yeah. And there really isn't. We, we've got so much to our advantage today that people never enjoyed in generations past. Right. <laughs> Not even 100 years ago. Right. Not even 50 years ago. We've got so many advantages and benefits, but there's no joy with them because as quickly as the benefits come, it seems like problems are multiplied. Yeah. And if we don't have enough just by natural occurrence, there are people all too willing in the hand of the devil to create dilemmas for us to deal with. Yeah. Amen. I don't know about you, but every day I have to check myself on forgiveness, particularly when I look at the political landscape yeah. and see the hideous things that are being done yeah. uh, by supposedly intelligent people. Yeah. You know how people can be so dumb? Because they're serving a devil that's no smarter. Right. right Amen. Right, right. And we need to have mercy on them. We need to pray for them. Yes. yes. Glory to God. Well, anyway, and down here in verse 4, it says, Thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff off his shoulder, of his shoulder, I'm sorry, the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every battle, the warrior is confused with noise and the garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. In other words, you ain't seen nothing yet. But verse 6 says, for unto us a child is born. Mm. See, I believe this wow. was a great light that shone in darkness. Right. Yes. This was a glimmer of hope to the hopeless yes. in a desolate world that was just riddled with, with death mm -hmm. and darkness and bleakness and hopelessness. Mm. It was the son that was to be born. Now, <clears throat> now what, what was the issue here? Why, why didn't Israel receive this son that was born, this this? This child that was born, the son that was... Why didn't they receive him? Because they had figured out what God needed to do. Mm -hmm. And how they wanted him to move, and he didn't do that. Yes. And so they rejected him in mm -hmm. mass. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, there were a few exceptions to that, but... I think how we, tragic. we do that today. Well, I, I know. <laughs> That's what astounds me is when I read the Bible, and I, I slap my head, and I think, how could they have done this? Mm. But you see it happening all around us, and sometimes we've been guilty of very similar things. Yeah. See, there are some folks that think that, that God is supposed to, to, to do all manner of things according to the way they, they figure out to do it. In other words, if you pray and you ask God to heal somebody, then, then God's supposed to jump up and go heal them. And I believe in healing. Don't misunderstand me for a moment. I believe God wants every one of his children healed. Yeah. He'll even heal the sinner if they'll let him. Yes, yes. I absolutely believe that. Yep. But it's by us rising up in our sonship as sons and daughters of the Most High yeah. and, and assuming the authority he's entrusted to us. Yes. It makes no more sense for us to pray for God to do something about the devil today than it would have made of Adam to pray for God to do something about the devil in the garden. Right. See, Adam had the authority to move and he neglected to. Yeah. And it's not going to be any better for believers <laughs> today if they neglect to learn who they are right. and what they have and right. how to use it. Right. That's why we spend this time teaching the Word of God. Yeah. There's hope to be had, but it's on God's terms and not yours. God is doing something about the devil. He's turned you loose on him, That's and he's right. given you his word. That's right. But we've got to do something. Amen? Yeah. So it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end and upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this do you know what <laughs> God is saying this is what I'm going to do yeah and he tells us, but, but now try to reconcile this, what it says of Jesus from the time of his first advent with what we're seeing today. It doesn't look like his government's increased, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it has. Yes. Yeah. It has. Amen. Yes. And, and why did Jesus come? Why, why, why was it necessary that he come to begin with? Mm. Yeah. To show the heart of a father. See, Israel, Israel had this idea that their biggest problem was Rome. Yeah. Because Rome had occupied Jerusalem and and was oppressing the Jews mm -hmm. like nobody else had before them. Yeah. And, and, and so they were tormented over Rome, and they were focused on the natural. Listen, folks, your biggest problem today is not natural. It's mm -hmm. not your right. neighbor. It's not your wife. It's, it's not, not your, your husband. <laughs> it's not even your children. No. It's the one that's pulling the strings behind it. Right, right. See, we're living the Wizard of Oz, only behind the curtain isn't some benevolent wizard. Uh -huh. It's some evil entity called Satan. Right. And he's pulling the strings of humanity. Yeah. And when you see somebody act out in the flesh, they're only representing how deep the spiritual issues are right. and how far-reaching they uh, are going. Amen? Right, right. And, and so when you look at the first advent, this, this, by the way, occurs after what they call the 400 silent years between Malachi and Matthew. When you look at it, you're seeing that God came to deal with the spiritual issues first. Yes. And most necessary. And, and when you think about that, what were the spiritual issues? The defeat and dethronement of Lucifer, of Satan, the yeah. fallen fallen angel. Right, Amen. Right. Yep. And his plan. Yeah. God came to So when you look at the first advent, Jesus came to be a sacrifice and an offering. Uh we're almost out of time, aren't we? Uh, let let me have you turn somewhere real quick. We're, we're going to talk about this a little bit more next week, too. Uh, but but in... in uh, hold on a minute here. My Bible's not cooperating. <laughs> <clears throat> Over here in uh, Revelation 13, listen to this. It's, it's speaking of fallen and sin ruled humanity during the tribulation. And in verse 4 it begins, And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Mm. Because, see, to these fallen people, the devil looked like there wasn't nothing he couldn't do. Mm. I mean, he, he at one point has slain the two prophets that mm -hmm. are there to represent God. Right. And surely if God would have seen anybody's spirit, it would have been them. Well, guess what? They ain't done yet. Right. Amen. And so <laughs> here we are. And it says, They worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with them? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him. But if it's given, remember, it'll be taken away too. To continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of the school bully that, that trash talks everybody, but then somebody finally stands up, up to him. <laughs> Yes. I can remember that happened to me one time way back in elementary school. Mm. And I, I stood up to this bully and he said, I don't have a fight with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I wasn't even any bigger than this kid. <laughs> I hadn't, hadn't probably fought a fight yet, but I had a pretty good punch for You know, I'd, I used to get in trouble. We'd have, my dad was a volunteer a little, fireman. We'd little, go to fireman's dinners. and You had a dude. Yeah, I did. Well, there was a little boy there that was a year or two older than me, and he was always wanting to pick a fight with me. Yep. Yeah, and uh, he'd do it. It seemed like every time we'd go to these, these dinners, these covered dishes at the fire department, he would, uh, I won't call his last name, his first name was Gary. i got to do that. <laughs> Gary would start picking a fight with me because I was smaller than him. He thought he could bully me. Mm. And I'd give him a gut punch, and then I'd hook him from underneath <laughs> with an uppercut. And, and I didn't even know these terms, but I, I watched enough cartoons, I knew how to fight. <laughs> Amen. And I'd hook him in the nose, and he'd always get a bloody nose. 
and, and this happened I, I know at least two different dinners that we went to he wasn't real smart he wasn't real quick on the uptake I guess it, it, two different times that he picked fights with me and I left him with a bloody nose and I was none the worse and I can remember I can remember I couldn't understand why all the firemen were laughing <laughs> and and, uh, and called me Floyd Patterson. Oh. You know, just <laughs> glory to God. Why did I get off on that? So I don't need to talk about that. Dinner, I guess. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was. But that's kind of how the devil. You know, he's talking all this trash, talking so big. Right, smack talk. But you know, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Now, the first time Jesus came, it looked like the devil got his way. Mm. And there's a lot of people thought the devil got his way. Mm -hmm. And even in tribulation, people are still going to be so ignorant of God's ways, Deceived. unfortunately, that they're going to think the devil has gotten his way. Mm -hmm. And yet, it says down here in uh, verse 8 of these people that are so deceived, it says, All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. <coughs> God wasn't taken by surprise when the devil and his ilk sought to take control of Jesus and crucify him. Yeah. Jesus said, it's my life. They're not taking it. I'm laying it down. Right, right. He was a willing sacrifice. Yeah. Amen. But see, that was that was the plan of God. Right. Israel wanted Jesus to come rid them of Rome and the oppression. Mm -hmm. They weren't even looking at spiritual things in an eternal damnation or eternal heaven. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to be rid of Rome. But God knew for there to be any lasting benefit to humanity, he had to do something of eternal significance. And so he came to slay man's greatest enemy, yeah. whether man recognized him or not. And I love in verse 9, it says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. Yes, Let yes. him hear. Yeah, yeah. Devil never has one, never will. He'll never be able to do any more than he's allowed to do, and that won't be for long. Right. So the first advent focused on Jesus as a gift to us, becoming our champion in battle to conquer the de the devil, death, and hell yeah. in our stead yes. and allow us to be sons and daughters mm. of the Most High God. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Think about this a moment. If Jesus didn't shy away from that first advent and all it represented, do you know what the next advent will be? Mm. He's returning on a stallion. There's going to be a sword out of his mouth. Yes. Yeah. And he's going to slay all that is dead, all that's death. Yeah. Yes. He, he's going to come and, and, and he's going to assume the throne and, and put every individual on this planet under his feet. Lord, yeah. Those that have refused to surrender, every knee's going to bow, folks. Right. See, everybody's going to eventually acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. It's undeniable. Yeah. If we do it now, and receive him as our Lord, we, we make heaven our destiny, yes. our home. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, to, I love this. I love this because it talks about that victory. It's Revelation 5. I'm going to say this and then I want to give Robin a few minutes. Mm. Well, I don't mm. want to, but I'm Go going ahead. to. Go ahead. Revelation 5, verse 1. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open. In other words, no man that is alive or has ever lived yes. was worthy to do this. No man. And so it says, And I wept much. Every time I read that I want to weep too because yeah. there's never a greater perspective of eternity than when one stands in heaven and looks over the, the threshold of eternity yeah. never more clear mm -hmm. in other words there was never a keener view of man's peril yeah. than what these individuals were beholding in this moment and there was nobody nobody not a man to be found that could open this book, mm -hmm. loose the seals. Verse 4, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look. That, there wasn't anybody even capable of looking upon it for the glory therein. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Mm. Weep not. Behold the line of the tribe of Judah, yes. the root of David, 
hath prevailed. When did he prevail? Mm. That first advent. Yeah. That's when he conquered death, hell, and the grave through his yes. own sacrifice. Yep, Amen. When he, yep. When he died at he the cross. He hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of saints, collecting all those prayers. Mm. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Folks, this is what Christmas was about. Yes. This is what Christmas is about and will always be about. Yes. There was a battle that raged on this earth that man was utterly oblivious to. See, the disciples at the cross even, they thought it's over, it's done. All of our hopes that we placed in him uh, were in vain because he's gone. They didn't know that the greater part of the battle was yet to be fought as he descended into this earth and through death slew death itself. That's what Christmas is about. It's about God slaying our greatest adversary. Yes next to ourselves amen <laughs> our greatest adversary so that instead of an eternal damnation we could enjoy glory to eternal glory in yes. heaven with yes. our father yes we could go to a place you know that people that go to hell are trespassers it wasn't even created for them right right and, and god didn't want them to go he there. didn't want them to go there and he it says he weeps at the death of the wicked he hadn't yes. sent one person to hell he never has people talk about if god's a living god why would he send him he hadn't there's only one way out of hell it's through the name of his son yeah. on your lips confessed as your lord and savior risen yes. from the dead yes amen yes there would be no way to escape hell were it not for god mm -hmm. and it was one with that first advent when the babe yeah came and the son was given mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. Glory to God. I'm not going to finish this, Rob. Uh, we'll pick up with it next week. We're going to talk a little bit. How do we receive this gift? Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I'm not just talking about receiving eternal life, but how do we receive this gift yes. Yes. that the Father has given? And what all are the implications of the gift that he made of his son to us? Yes. You got anything to share? Mm. I'm just soaking it up. <laughs> I'm just soaking it up. I'm pulling back to something the lord's had me continuously praying you know there are some prayers that in the bible we can see were repeat prayers mm -hmm. a lot of these prayers had to do with giving thanks Amen. for others giving thanks worship. to our father <laughs> always worshiping having a, a grateful heart and attitude and also as we pray for for fellow believers and as well as we're praying for the lost world around us Amen. and as you're you know you're sharing so much and you're giving glimpses of the last days and a lot of them kind of align we can see similarities right now amen we've seen it lived out before us yes yes but something that's just standing out to me is we need to keep it in perspective a lot of people have been afraid of end time events yes. have been afraid of last days there is nothing to be afraid of when we are part of the body of christ yeah. nothing to be afraid of because he's given us everything we would need to stand and i want to read this this is so good out of ephesians 6 we've heard it we've pondered it we've gone over it and over it and every single time Amen. that i feed on this i get more out of it yes. and, and it helps keep things in perspective we need to keep things in perspective because the world we live in will try to create the filters we look through Amen. and will try to to bring us uh, attitude it'll make people your enemy not the devil who yes, really is exactly exactly and it'll it'll put you in a defensive position of fear 
of fear. But out of Ephesians 6, it says, in verse 11, it says, Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you'll be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. 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 That's real important to latch on to. The devil is forever. What has he tried to... You'll catch it. He'll do, he'll do one of several things. He'll try to accuse God of being unfaithful to you, to your prayers. Or he will try to accuse others around us to draw us into unforgiveness, draw us into an attitude and a spirit of unforgiveness. Have you ever noticed? I have been astounded, and I've started laughing about it over the years, how as we are in our final preparations for Sunday services... On Saturday, af- Saturday, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evenings, the stupidest things will go, memories will come to mind. The stupidest events. And I've come, I- I've started laughing about it years and years ago. And I said, you stupid devil, you, it's not worth it. The unforgiveness, the wrong that person did, how, how bad they did us, whatever, it's not even worth it. It is not worth it. I'm not picking up that offense at all. So he'll try to accuse God or he'll try to bring up accusations against others that we settled, that we said, you know what, I'm putting that to rest. I'm laying that down. And do you know, we forgive others because he forgave us. We don't forgive others because they deserve it. Amen. If we're going to forgive Amen. others on the basis of them deserving it, then we are now holding up a precedent that God can forgive us according to how we walk and forgive others so we really better get that together very and we can he's given us his spirit and his love and his insight Amen. so anyway it talks about uh standing protected as we fight against the strategies strategies of the accuser strategies he's he's got strategies that he he's, tries to trip he's us got up a plan with. and he's working at the church but he's defeated <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> he's got a plan and he's working at the church and needs to be working god's plan yes yes, yes. and verse 12 says your hand to hand combat and this is so good I have been praising God for this over and over and over your hand to hand combat is not with human beings is not with human beings our hand to hand combat is not with human beings but it's with principalities authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms and I love that too those that are operating in rebellion principalities are operating in rebellion they're rebelling against the most high they're rebelling against the one with all the power, all the authority, all the redemption is in has already been settled in Christ Jesus. They're just stupid spirits trying to rebel against God's plan. Amen. That's why we need to walk. That's why we need to take authority over the adversary in the world we live in. We want light to come. We can pray for light to come all day long to our capital, to our cities, to our states, to our governments. The way light comes is men and women receive and see the light, receive in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen. We are walking light in this world that we live in. We are. We are. Amen. We're the ones who carry this. We're the salt and the light. But it says, it goes on to say, those spirits are a class of demon gods trying to hold this dark world in bondage. And every time I read that, I say, but Father, I thank you. We're pushing back that darkness in the name of Jesus. We're pushing it back. And we're thanking you, Father, that the light has come. It came in Jesus, and it's shining through every person who receives him, every person who receives him. Then it goes on to say, uh, let me see. Because of this, you must wear all the armor God provides. So you're protected as you confront the slanderer. There's another avenue that the devil tries to hit us with. He's a slanderer. For you're destined for all things and rise victorious. We're not praying for victory. For victory, We're praying from victory. Every Amen. prayer a believer prays is not a begging, pleading, oh God, it's gotten so bad prayer. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hold your head high. Hold your neck up high. Act like you own cotton in Augusta. When we're speaking to the devil and we're telling him, you're not the one in authority here. I am in Jesus name and verse 14 says put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph it doesn't say to get triumph it says to continue to stand in triumph do you know the truth is what helps us stand in triumph when the devil's trying to bring symptoms against our body it's the truth that wait a minute if Jesus by his stripes I was healed and he paid the price so I could have healing he took my sickness and disease so I could receive his health and 
and wholeness and healing, then why should I have it again? If Amen. the price has already been paid, why should I pay the price again? I'm Amen. telling you, when you find out, when we find out who we are in Christ Jesus, we're going to get mad. We're going to see that the devil has tried to rob us, has tried to steal us, has tried to lie to our family members, and we will roar like a lion as we begin to speak God's word. You know, the Bible talks about ultimately when the devil's cast into hell and uh, the lake of fire, it says those that are there awaiting him, those that he deceived and misled, uh, are awaiting him are going to look upon him and say, is this the worm, worm? that deceived us? Is this the worm? Wasn't even little a snake. Worm. Little worm. <laughs> little worm. Worm don't even have teeth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you said something else that's got me thinking, and and it was this. When you were talking about as believers were salt and light. Yes. Might it be a lot of the people that, that provoke us are being misled because there's not enough light around them for them to see what's right? Yes. Oh, yes. That's true. You know, maybe instead of praying for God to give them light, we ought to focus on being the light he's placed us to be. Yes. And that's not yes. a condemn. That's like me. Uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to... I don't want to spend the rest of my days on this earth. I don't want to ever have another come to Jesus meeting where I sit there and ponder the possibility that people went to hell while I played. Right, right, right. You know, I, well, mm. I mean, it takes the fun right out of that fun and games. It does. You know? It sure does. You know what? And I got to. I was living a horrible life when I died and went to heaven. Yes. My salvation, thank God it didn't depend on my behavior. Right, right. And neither does yours. No. But somebody else's may. Right. Because right. do they see Jesus? Does your life lend lend credibility to the message of Jesus that you proclaim right, or not? Right, right, right. And, and, and uh, that means walking we're walking in Christ Jesus. His righteousness, we've received that robe of righteousness when amen. we received Christ Jesus. We received we, we received the hand. family ring. The family ring the signet ring that had the symbol for that family we we it, it screamed i belong amen. i have found my family i have yes. found my tribe i have amen. found where i belong <laughs> whenever they whenever they put that ring on his finger it represented what we've received in christ put shoes on his feet god will cover our naked dirty little feet he will cover them we will no longer be slaves that didn't have shoes we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Sorry, I'm getting off track here. <laughs> Lizzie, better. put on the belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Yes. Hmm. Yes. We need to let that soak in for a minute. Let that soak in for just a minute. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers our heart. Amen. Boy, we better protect Amen. our hearts in these last days. Guard our hearts. Guard our hearts. Stand on your feet alert. Then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith. See, we can't throw away faith. I've seen some. I've seen some struggles around me for you know, and, and gone through some myself. And I realized that I wasn't maintaining the the stand of faith. It says, in every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it's able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. It's hilarious. I mean, if we will stand in faith and speak the word to symptoms, to depression, to frustration, to anxiety, to what seems like loss of victory... Amen. If we will stand in faith and speak God's word, it is like taking a blowtorch to to icicles being thrown at us by the devil. It'll dissolve them. It'll melt them. It, it'll turn them to nothing as we stand in the spoken word of God. Amen. Extinguishing those blazing arrows. Uh, embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect our thoughts from lies. Lies. Boy, the devil's always lying, isn't he? Always got a lie to tell. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Then it tells us to pray passionately as we constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray blessings on all of God's children. Amen. That we need Amen. to do that. Let's pray the prayer of salvation for who wants to serve Jesus. Because we can be empowered if we simply receive plug in to the source of all the authority on the face of the earth because God Jesus was raised to highest 
highest victory above all these other principalities. The Word of God tells us in Ephesians 1, He was seated at the right hand of the Father. God raised Him up from death, hell. You were talking about that. Yeah. Death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And and who holds all the authority? The one who conquered death, hell, hell and, the, and grave. the grave for us so, so that we wouldn't have to go there. Amen. So we want people to have the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Just accepting Him. Please don't try to get good enough because if you wait till you get good enough, you are never going to be good enough. None Amen. of us can be good enough. None are righteous. No, not one. Pastors weren't righteous. Pastors' wives weren't righteous. Missionaries weren't righteous. There is none righteous. No, not one. What happens is we recognize we are undone without Christ and that He, in receiving Christ, we are made complete. For the first time in our lives, when Jesus comes to live in our heart, things click the, Absolutely. the pieces of the puzzle come Absolutely. together. You know, that's that's the power that we wield in our, I, I'd say our hands, but in our mouth. Yes, as, yes. As, as believers, yes. is, is we're not just preaching some religion. Mm -mm. Religion you know, won't do any good. In Colossians, Paul said, now are you complete in him. Yes. And that word complete means, it, it's kind of a finishing term in carpentry. Yes. It means that God has restored us to a state of completeness yes you ever heard some some girl or some boy say uh, you know you ask them why they like so and so well they complete me nobody will complete you like, like God <laughs> will complete you and That's when you right. start sharing the good news yes the good news of God's love for people yes it scratches an itch that no hand has ever reached yes yes amen Glory to God. You know, it scratches an itch. I've seen people that were so smug and prideful <laughs> when I'd start talking about Jesus. And you could see that word because under my breath, I'm, I'm thanking God that his word's sharper than a two-edged yes, sword. Yes. It ain't going to just divide. It's going to divide between their mind and their spirit. Yes. And, and I, I've seen some of the most arrogant people <laughs> that look so smug and, and haughty when I started sharing Jesus. But by the time I got done, because I was relying on Jesus, yes. not me. Right, right, right. It wasn't that I was so smart. No. Amen. I was just smart enough to follow God's lead. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, I, I've seen them just humbled and broken. And, and uh, I remember we had a fellow from the Unification Church come in. And mm -hmm. other churches in the neighborhood called the law on them to get them off their property. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we said, come on in. We'll talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> right. And we did, and that boy left with a copy of Dad Hagen's The New Birth in His Hand. Yes. Because I, I said, well, what do you, why does man need salvation? And he started telling me their line of reasoning. Mm. And, and uh, I said, well, you know what? I said, how, how are you going to achieve salvation? And his answer was worse. Mm. I said, well, you, you know, Dad Hagen uses this little illustration. He said, you can take a donkey, you can prune its ears back, you can file its teeth down, <laughs> but you take it out to the derby and run it, it ain't going to beat no horses. Because no. it's <laughs> no. by nature the same animal, no, yeah. no matter what. He said, and people go out there and try to pretty themselves up by yes. addressing their looks and their conduct, but they're still the same old beast. On the inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. and you must be born again. And that, that was about the time he quit smiling because it made sense. Yeah. Yes, yes. Amen. Well, yes. We, we, better, well, we find pray. out who we are when we receive Christ. Well, we it opens our eyes to who we were made to be. <laughs> we find out our need was greater than we ever imagined. Yes, yes. And, we, we find out every gift. They begin. It begins to stir the gifts that were placed on the inside of us from the time we were in our mother's womb. We begin to see how God views us, which is so Amen. different, so different from how we tend to view ourselves. Oh well, let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Pray so much. Amen. Go ahead. Praise God, Father. We just thank you so much for those that are listening today. Listen, if you're out there and you've never received Jesus, make this confession of faith with me, Father God. I come to you humbled before you recognizing that i need a savior yes i also recognize according to your word that you sent one for me his name is jesus yes so i believe that father you raised up jesus from the dead and i confess him to be my lord and savior and father now that i'm a believer i also want to receive the holy spirit fill me with your holy spirit yes, father god Thank you, and let father. your holy spirit have his way in my life so that i can be used of you to your greatest advantage and your greatest glory yes in jesus name, in jesus name. Amen. amen amen god amen. bless you listen we went a little bit long today but how, how can you not talk about Jesus? You know, how can you talk about Jesus and not go along is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you go back and listen to this, I encourage you to do that. You can take it in small doses. You control the switch 
on playback. Amen. But be sure, I'm so thankful to those of you, some of you have already shared this with other people. We, we want to reach this world. Jesus is coming back soon. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's incumbent upon us to tell the world before he gets here. Yes. God bless you. Thank you for being here today with us. Amen. Amen.